Right now, Speaker Mike Johnson is facing a revolt from inside his own party over his decision to finally put aid to Ukraine up for a vote in the House. Johnson had resisted doing that for months, but this week he finally relented. Here he was explaining the reality of what he is facing just a few hours ago. I'm operating with the smallest margin in U.S. history. I have a one vote margin. Listen, we're not going to get 100 percent of what we want right now because we have the smallest majority in history and we only have the majority in one chamber. Despite what Speaker Johnson understands here, far right members of his party are now saying they will call a vote to oust Johnson over his decision to bring up Ukraine aid. And that's going to go to the floor for a vote. That is how much the far right does not want to help Ukraine combat Russia's war of aggression. And this is not just a problem for the Republican Party. It is a problem for Ukraine and America and the rest of the world. Because Ukraine and the vote on Ukraine funding has become a leverage point for Russia. The Washington Post has some explosive reporting today on newly revealed documents from inside Vladimir Putin's government. Documents which show how Russia is seeking to subvert Western support for Ukraine and disrupt the domestic politics of the United States and European countries through propaganda campaigns and supporting isolationist and extremist policies. Russia is fomenting division over Ukraine because it wants to weaken America's role in the world. In particular, one Russian policy expert cited in one of these documents specifically calls on Russia to continue to facilitate the coming to power of isolationist right-wing forces in America. Just to put a finer point on this. Russia very much wants the Marjorie Taylor Greens of the world to continue doing exactly what they're doing because it serves Russia's interests. This is not the only piece of evidence we have of that. Last week, two top House Republicans warned that pro-Russian propaganda had infiltrated the Republican Party and was being repeated by Republican members of Congress in debates about Ukraine. Earlier this week, Marjorie Taylor Greene parroted Vladimir Putin's central lie justifying his invasion of Ukraine by calling the Ukrainian government Nazis. Ukraine, for the record, is the only nation in the world other than Israel to have a Jewish head of state, Vladimir Zelensky. But Marjorie Taylor Greene wants to block aid to that country because she says it is run by Nazis. So who knows where this vote on Ukraine aid could lead? Republicans could vote to remove Speaker Johnson and once again throw the House of Representatives and therefore much of our American government again into chaos, something that would directly serve Russia's ends. And maybe that is the whole point. Joining me now is Senator Chris Murphy, Democrat from Connecticut. He is a member of the Senate Appropriations Committee and the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Senator Murphy, it's great to see you. Thank you so much for being here. Um, First, let me just get your reaction to the reporting we have out of the Post about the way in which Ru Russia is delighted to see the infighting over Ukraine aid unfolding in the U.S. Congress. Well, of course they are, because the only way that they can win in Ukraine is if the United States withdraws its support uh, for Ukraine. And you know, let's be clear about why we care so much about stopping Russia from taking over Ukraine. It's not just because we have a sympathy and a kinship for the Ukrainian people. It's because Putin has made clear that he's not going to stop at Ukraine. And if he is given the entire country, uh, very quickly, he could be moving on to a NATO ally. That will be U.S. troops. That'll be U.S. Uh, men and women, Americans, fighting and dying in Europe. That'll be a green light to China to invade Taiwan, potentially erupting uh, a regional war in Southeast Asia. This is cataclysmic for U.S. interests. Um, the triggers that could be set off by Putin winning so expeditiously in Ukraine only because the United States abandons them there. So there is no doubt that Putin is spending a lot of money here in the United States and in Europe trying to undermine support for Ukraine, trying to support individuals who are trying to argue against Ukraine funding. And listen, there's no doubt that he is rooting 
very badly for Donald Trump. There's no date that, doubt that he will likely play a big role in this upcoming election, because if we get this bill across the finish line, Alex, if we do fund Ukraine, it'll only be through the beginning of next year. And if Donald Trump is elected, that's a pretty clear guarantee that this would be the last Ukraine funding bill that would ever clear the House, Senate and get passed uh, and signed into law by the president. To that end, I just want to draw everyone's attention to a quote from Mikhail Khodorkovsky, who is a Russian opposition figure. And he says, the Americans consider that insofar as they are not directly participating in the war in Ukraine, then any loss is not their loss. This is an absolute misunderstanding. A defeat for Ukraine, he said, means that many will stop fearing challenging the U.S. and the costs for the United States will only increase. It feels like some people in the Senate, in the Republican Party, understand the importance here of not empowering the isolationists, both as a matter of sort of Republican functionality and also in, in terms of the cause of, of Western-style liberal democracy around the world. Do you think the fact that Speaker Johnson is willing to bring up this Ukraine uh, aid funding to the chagrin of the far-right members of his caucus is a signal that House Republicans are finally beginning to realize that they have been employed as useful idiots for the Kremlin? Uh, no, <laughs> I, I would not go that far. Uh, it seems as if Speaker Johnson has made a, an individual decision um, that it would be a disaster for the United States to abandon Ukraine. And I think he knows that this would be his legacy, right? His political obituary would lead with his abandonment of Ukraine because he has a coalition of Democrats and Republicans that support Ukraine. The Senate has already voted uh, 70 to 30 with a big bipartisan majority for Ukraine. So he knows it's it would be him and him only that would get the blame for handing Ukraine to Vladimir Putin. Um, so I don't think this suggests any conversion inside the Republican Party to understand the way they've been influenced by Russia. I think it's Speaker Johnson making the right decision in the here and now. And for today, at least, we should celebrate that. Do you have an expectation that we're going to be looking for a new Speaker of the House? And if we are, what's your expectation for the U.S. Congress and what happens next? So, uh, you know, my my sense is, is that there are some Democrats who will oppose a motion to vacate in the House of Representatives should Speaker Johnson go through with his proposal to bring aid to Ukraine, aid to Israel and humanitarian assistance before the House. And should that be successful? He needs to get enough Republicans to support it so that alongside Democrats, it passes the House and moves to the Senate. Uh, so it's possible that he will survive a motion to vacate because there will be a handful of Democrats who will support him. And the reality is, is right now the only way to pass anything through the House of Representatives is a coalition of mostly Democrats, because the majority of Republicans in the House are just full-time arsonists. They are inside government to destroy government, to destroy the legitimacy of government, to try to burn down the government. And so, you know, whether it's votes to for who, who's the next speaker, whether it's votes to pass Ukraine aid, votes to pass a budget, it's really still Democrats that are the only thing that keep that place functional. And Johnson has finally realized that. Hey, everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on Get or the Cloud icon and enjoy it.